What happens if an S-tier assassin disguises themselves as the weakest in a military school? Let's jump right in, Idea is like the very core of a person's spirit. After a while, humans realised Idea existed, and they started turning it into real things. People also began giving ranks to Idea, which are the souls. Before, all souls were equal, but now they're ranked. This causes a lot of discrimination and hate towards those with lower ranks. Hyundai Special High School became a place to train and improve Idea, making the country of Korea stronger in the world. Lots of other schools did the same thing. At these schools, students had amazing powers that made them different from normal people. One student named Park Jin Sung stood out, but not for good reasons. He had the lowest rank possible, F. His classmates were mean to him, and it seemed like they hated even being in the same class as him. One day, the teacher had good news. The government noticed how well the third-year students were doing, so the school would become a military place. The students and teachers would get ranks, and the military would look for really good people to join them. If the students didn't like this change, they could go to a different school. The students were curious about why the school was changing. The teacher explained that their school was becoming military because of how amazing the third-year students were. They all had to take a test to get a rank, and their teacher, who was now a platoon leader, would test them. Everyone was starting as a private, except Jin Sung. He had to start as a trainee soldier because his teacher thought he was too weak. CH2. Jin Sung's teacher and classmates didn't think he could handle the tough military school. They wanted him to leave. They thought he wouldn't make it. Even his teacher asked if he wanted to transfer, but Jin Sung believed in himself, even though they laughed at him. He asked his teacher if there were ranks in a person's soul, and the teacher said yes. Even though the teacher laughed deep down, he thought all souls were the same. Jin Sung was put in a squad led by Byun gi -yong. People treated Jin Sung badly, even his own squad leader, but Jin Sung didn't let it bother him. He was used to it. The teacher said they wouldn't have a normal class. Instead, they would do an event to impress the scouts from the government. They had a big battle between different squads. Jin Sung's second year squad had to fight against the best third year squad. gi -yong was feeling a mix of surprise and fear when he learned that they would have to compete against the best students in the school Everyone, including ji Yong himself, thought they didn't stand a chance, especially with Jin Song, an F-rank student, on their team. ji Yong's spirits were low, and he got upset with Jin Song. When Jin Song stood up for himself, ji Yong's anger grew, and he decided to use Jin Song as a shield during the upcoming event. Before we continue, take a moment to answer the question of the day. What is the best ability class? This means classes like Assassin, Warrior, etc. Comment down below for a chance to be shouted out. Now back to the recap TH3. The third year students, led by Sung Ho, the top performing student in the school, were all set for the event. Their teacher encouraged Sung Ho to showcase his skills to catch the eye of scouts. Each student received a special bracelet that used Edea power to protect them from shocks. However, these bracelets had limits. They could only take so much damage before breaking. If a student's bracelet broke, they were out of the event. The team that managed to eliminate all opponents would win. Gi Yong's second year squad had a tougher challenge. They only needed to survive for five minutes to win, but even that seemed like a big task against their highly skilled opponents. Even before the event began, the second year students were lacking confidence. As the event started, Gi Yong immediately retreated to the back with Jin Sung, leaving their squad to fend off the third years on their own. The third years launched a strong attack and began taking out the second year students one by one. Julie, one of the third year students, targeted Jin Sung and gi Yong. Helpless, they watched as Julie approached. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Jin Sung reacted swiftly to Julie's movements and dodged her attack. She was surprised by this, and quickly summoned an Adea armour to protect herself. She couldn't help but wonder if Jin Sung's earlier behaviour was just an act, as he had reacted perfectly to Julie's speed. Taking advantage of the situation, gi Yong fled to save himself. Now alone, Jin Sung realised his only chance was to stall for the remaining three minutes, he tried to distract Julie by talking, but she demanded that he fight. He attempted to avoid fighting by asking her to calm down, but this only made her angrier. With no other choice, Jin Sung finally revealed his weapon, a regular dagger with no special abilities. Julie was surprised and disappointed, realising she was up against the rumoured F-rank student. She chose to walk away, not wanting to waste time on a weak opponent. Frustrated by her reaction, Jin Sung decided to launch a sneak attack with his dagger, hoping to turn the situation around. However, as anticipated, the F rank today proves inadequate, failing even to make a dent on her armour. CH4 Jin Sung's classmates start teasing him again, and even Julie seems let down by his performance. She had hoped for more, 
having witnessed his quick reflexes. Nevertheless, he managed to buy some time, and now there are only two minutes left on the clock. Now, the third-year student shifts her attention to Guillaume, who spent the entire fight evading. He appeared scared, but it turns out he had a plan. Guillaume employs his idea on a large boulder buried beneath the ground. Jin Sung appears to understand powers, warning Julie just as he activates his ability called Extract and Swing. With this power, he can use objects stuck in place as weapons, flinging them at his enemy. Following suit, Guillaume uproots the massive boulder from the ground and hurls it towards Julie with surprising speed. However, his triumph is short-lived as the other squad leader, who ambushes him, takes him down with ease. Meanwhile, Julie deploys her Edea to create a shield, attempting to halt the boulder. Unfortunately, it proves stronger than she anticipated. While Julie struggles to fend off the boulder, Sungo shatters the massive rock into fragments using his idea, upsetting Julie as she wanted to display her strength to the scouts. Sungo explains that his actions were meant to assist her, as it's his duty as the squad leader to protect all team members. As they continue their interaction, Guillaume suddenly attempts to strike Sei on Ho with a baseball bat. Sungo swiftly teleports behind him using his idea and employs martial arts to take him down. His ability, called I'll Definitely Catch You, allows him to teleport instantly towards his intended target. With Ji Young defeated, Jin Sung remains as the sole second year student. Sung Ho shifts his focus to him. Jin Sung begins to panic, trying to surrender. Sung Ho, however, refuses to end the contest without a fight. He attacks Jin Sung, knocking the dagger out of his hand. Surprisingly, Jin Sung catches the dagger with his other hand while it's still in the air and attempts to attack Sung Ho. Taken aback by this unexpected move, Sung Ho backs away and questions Jin Sung's true identity. Jin Sung tries to buy more time by engaging Sung Ho in conversation, hoping to stall for the remaining minute. However, Sung Ho sees through Jin Sung's strategy and confronts him, questioning his lack of effort. Sung Ho reveals that students who perform poorly might get transferred to a different school. Fearing this transfer, Jin Sung decides to fight seriously for the first time. He activates his Edea called Absolute Murder, enveloping himself in a dark aura. This ability triples his physical strength and allows him to identify his opponent's weaknesses and their tactics. To turn it off, he needs to destroy the enemy's Edea or kill them. CH5 In a surprising twist, we finally learn that Jin Sung's true Edea is an S-rank named Absolute Murder. Sung Ho is stunned by Jin Sung's ability to instantly identify the rank of his Edea. The atmosphere changes dramatically as Jin Sung's demeanour becomes dark and menacing, as if he wanted to kill Sung Ho. The spectators, unaware of the impending danger, remain clueless. Julie senses the shift in atmosphere and realises the danger. She quickly orders the entire third-year squad to take down Jin Sung. Without hesitation, the whole team charges toward him and tackles him to the ground, ending the showdown abruptly. However, Sung Ho feels disappointed, expressing to Julie that he didn't need protection. She reveals that in the brief moment before they tackled Jin Sung, he managed to attack the entire squad with incredible speed. This attack was so swift that it was invisible to the naked eye. Instead of being terrified, Sung Ho smiles upon realising this. To Julie's surprise, her armour shatters. It becomes clear that Jin Sung's quick attack wasn't just fast, but also immensely powerful. Not just her armour, but the entire squad's bracelets also break off. As no one witnessed the attack, they assume it was a staff error. Yet the staff seems to be the only one who recognises Jin Sung's potential. Just as the five minutes elapse, Jin Sung appears to return to normal. After the intense battle, Sung Ho approaches Jin Sung and proposes a rematch without any interference. Jin Sung wasn't too happy about it at first. He told Sung Ho that he didn't think it was a good idea. But Sung Ho didn't really listen to him. He just went ahead with his plan. And when the big moment came, the audience was really surprised by what happened. Those second year students, the ones who were thought to be weaker, they actually won. Nobody saw that coming. Later, there was a meeting at the principal's office. A special person from the government was there, looking through the students' records. When he saw Sung Ho's file, he saw a lot of accomplishments. Sung Ho had done well in a bunch of competitions, but the special person didn't seem too impressed. Sung Ho was only ranked as a B student. Then, the special person looked at Jin Sung's file. It didn't really stand out, but there was something interesting. It said that Jin Sung's parents had died when he was only eight years old. And because of that, he didn't use his power until later, when he was ten. That got the special person's attention. Most kids use their power, called Edea, when they're around eight. So, this was different. The special person started to wonder if Jin Sung was hiding something. The special person wanted to meet Jin Sung in person to talk about it more. Meanwhile, the principal was also curious about the school. 
It had become a military school, and the special person didn't give a clear answer about why. He said they were looking for a student who could change their past self. It was all a bit mysterious. CH6. Now, Jin Sung's days were pretty normal. He woke up early every morning, got ready for school, and did all the chores. But school wasn't easy. He was still being picked on by other students. Even though he had won that big fight, some people thought it was just luck. But things were a bit better now. He wasn't getting hurt as much as before. Still, he was stuck doing everyone's errands. One day, the teacher reminded everyone that they had to join a club. Jin Sung felt a lot of pressure. The teacher talked about a special meeting for those who didn't join a club. Jin Sung just wanted a simple club where he didn't have to use his power. But when he looked at the list, most of the clubs were about military stuff or using their powers. It was a bit overwhelming. Then, he saw a club called the HT Club. It was all about getting healthy together and doing physical activities. Jin Sung got really excited about it. He could get fit without using his power. So he went straight to the gym to sign up. But when he got there, he was surprised. There were so many students waiting to sign up, even first-year students who didn't have to join a club yet. And then he found out why. The president of the club was none other than Sung Ho, the most popular kid in school. Sung Ho saw Jin Sung and was happy to see him. CH7. Jin Sung didn't want to cause a scene, but Sung Ho brought him back to the gym. They had to take a test to join the club. The test was tough. They had to keep up with Sung Ho while he did gruelling exercises. However, for a whole year, no one had succeeded in joining because of how tough the challenges were. As the day of the challenging test arrived, a group of brave students gathered. Excitement and nervousness filled the air. The test began, and as it progressed, some students began to give up. The first group of participants couldn't keep up and dropped out one by one. It seemed impossible to pass. Among them was Jin Sung, who was surprised by his friend Sung Ho's enduring energy. Sung Ho wasn't even tired after all the exercises. Feeling scared but determined, the second group of students urged Jin Sung to try. He hesitated but eventually gave it a shot. Even though he exercised every day to build his stamina, he struggled to keep up with Sung Ho's pace. Despite the bullying and challenges, Jin Sung persevered, becoming the last one standing. Everyone was amazed that even the lowest-ranked student had held on. As the test neared its end, Sung Ho began to admire Jin Sung's strength and determination. Even the younger students cheered for the underdog, urging him to finish the test with all his might. Jin Sung pushed through the final sets and became the only student to pass. Sung Ho warmly welcomed Jin Sung to the club. Although Jin Sung wanted to quit immediately, Sung Ho paid no attention and continued to ignore him. Finally, Sung Ho had found someone who could match his level, and he was happy about it. CH8 After joining the HT club, Jin Sung gained attention from everyone. People were curious about how he managed to pass the tough entry test. Even though he wanted to leave the club, he knew Sung Ho wouldn't allow it. Jin Sung even briefly considered breaking his arm to avoid going, but he quickly dismissed the idea. One day, as he reluctantly headed to the club, Jin Sung encountered a confident female student named Seon. She introduced herself as a corporal and caught Jin Sung's attention. Despite finding her pretty, Jin Sung didn't recall her from his class. Sung Ho appears. Seon wasn't intimidated by Sung Ho's authority and stood up to him. Even when Sung Ho tried to belittle her, she showed her strength and independence. Seon's attempt to make Sung Ho her boyfriend took an unexpected turn. Sung Ho rejected her, and she turned her attention to Jin Sung with the same proposal. Eventually, the situation ended, and the training resumed. Jin Sung and Sung Ho endured gruelling exercises at the gymnasium, impressing Seon who watched from the sidelines. She was very eager to find out what secrets Jin Sung was hiding. CH9 The following day, Seon officially joined the class and asserted herself by choosing a seat next to Jin Sung in Squad 3. She even scared another student into giving up their seat for her. Seon's introduction to the class didn't go as planned and she came across as arrogant instead of cheerful. As the days passed, Seon's extraordinary abilities and unique family lineage became known. She possessed the rare hereditary idea called the White Jade Goblin, passed down through generations. The idea only appeared in female descendants of the Kim family, leading to a decline in their population. Seon's incredible sword skills made her stand out, and the homeroom teacher appointed her as the vice captain of the squad. Jin Sung was amazed by Seon's fame and abilities, while Ji Young, another student, grew displeased by her new role. CH10. The tension between Giyong and Seon escalated, making things more complicated. As the days went by, the tension between Giyong and Seon seemed to grow stronger and stronger. 
Guillaume's feelings of anger and resentment towards Seon only seemed to intensify over time. One afternoon, Seon extended a friendly invitation to Jin Sung, asking him to join her for a meal. However, Jin Sung politely declined, explaining that he had a long list of chores to complete. Giyongzi's frustration reached new heights when he discovered that Jin Sung wasn't just tending to his own squad's tasks, but also taking on responsibilities for the entire class. Despite Jin Sung's attempts to downplay the situation, Giyong was unwilling to let it slide. He took matters into his own hands and confronted the students who were making Jin Sung do their chores. Giyong demanded that they apologise to Jin Sung for their actions. Not stopping there, Giyong brought the matter to the attention of the homeroom teacher, hoping for a resolution. To Giyong's dismay, the teacher feigned ignorance and placed Seyon in charge of dividing the chores to ease the tension. Giyong's frustration grew even more as Seyon began assigning chores to the class students. They tried to avoid their responsibilities and push all the work onto Jin Song. However, Seyon's strong authority and popularity meant no one dared to challenge her decisions. She made sure everyone did their fair share of the chores, effectively diffusing the situation. As Seyon's leadership continued to gain respect, Giyong found himself becoming increasingly frustrated. He attempted to assert his authority over Seyon, but she stood her ground, respecting only those who displayed true strength. Giyong's irritation reached a boiling point, and he confronted Seyon, even challenging her for her leadership position. Seyon's response was unexpected. She calmly informed Giyong that she could easily take over his role as squad leader. This statement further infuriated him, leading him to invite Seyon for a private discussion on the rooftop. Jin Sung, who had overheard their conversation, sensed something suspicious and decided to follow Seyon to the rooftop. To his shock, Giyong had set up an ambush with a group of students ready to attack Seyon. It became clear that this was all part of Giyong's revenge plan against her. Despite the ambush, Seyon remained composed and unfazed. CH 11. She boldly confronted Giyong, stating that revenge wouldn't deter her. She reminded him that as a section leader she had to follow orders, but she also emphasised that rank was determined by both strength and intelligence. Seyon challenged Giyong to prove himself and make smarter decisions if he wanted to outrank her. Meanwhile, Jin Sung quietly listened to their conversation from behind the rooftop door. Giyong's frustration grew, and he urged the students with him to unleash their abilities known as a Edea. Even though many of them had lower ranking Edea and no special powers, Giyong believed that by combining their strengths, they could overcome Seyon. Giyong had carefully orchestrated everything, gathering a group of 15 students to ensure their victory. He was confident that their plan could succeed since Seon wouldn't be able to use her Edea without a specific blade, which she didn't have with her. Giyong taunted Seon, trying to intimidate her. Despite Giyong's attempts to rally the students and overwhelm Seon, she stepped forward with confidence. She reminded them that she was an A-rank blade master and could take on a hundred students below her rank. Suddenly a horn appeared on her head, and a powerful blue light emanated from her, activating her at Edea, known as White Jade Goblin. Giyong ordered his fellow students to attack Seyon, claiming that her lack of a blade reduced her strength by half. However, Seyon skillfully blocked their attacks, easily defeating them. When one student accused her of not understanding the struggles of those without natural talent, Seyon revealed that she had once been a D-rank in combat ability. Despite Giyong's attempts to dismiss this revelation, Seyon's hard work and determination had indeed paid off. In a surprising turn of events, the other students attacked Seyon all at once, attempting to overpower her. However, Seyon's strength and resolve remained unshaken, and she faced their challenge head on. In the fierce battle, Seyon proves her strength by defeating all the other students. CH 12. Only Giyong remains, standing confidently. Yet a question lingers in Seyon's mind. Does Giyong have a secret strategy? Seyon has been avoiding hitting people in the face during the fight, but a surprising twist occurs. Giyong's plan is to get hit in the face, hoping it will lead to Seyon's suspension or even expulsion. Just as Seyon prepares to strike, Jinsen steps in. He stops her punch and pretends to ask Giyong if he's okay, cleverly covering up Seyon's move. When Giyong questions whether Jinsen bought him, Seyon denies it. Jinsung's heart sinks as he feels the weight of never truly belonging anywhere. Seon's suspicion is aroused by Jin Sung's seemingly low combat rank, yet he managed to swiftly intercept her attack on Giyong. How did he do it? Jin Sung pleads for the situation to end as the sun sets, but anger flares within him as Giyong threatens to report them. However, a surprise twist unfolds. Jin Sung reveals that he broke the hidden camera the surgeon was using to record them. The focus shifts to Jin Sun, and all eyes are on him. 
How did he manage to halt Seon's powerful swing? Seon encourages the defeated students to learn from Jinsen's quick thinking and emulate his actions. As they depart from the rooftop, Seon takes Shinsung with her, hoping his newfound friends will help him find his place. Later, Jinsung finds himself in a puzzling dream, covered in blood, attacking his uncle. He awakens to the sound of his blaring alarm, the dream's residue still lingering. CH 13. After school, Seon notices a change in Jinsung. He seems different, worn out. The squad heads to a location known only to the surgeons, guided by a teacher's instruction. Giyong leads them to a bank's entrance, where students from How and High await. Strangely, the students show interest only in Seon, triggering his frustration. He proudly proclaims his rank and squad leadership, demanding attention. A boy from Seojong High extends a friendly handshake, but Giyong's rudeness prevails. Seon steps in, scolding Giyong for jeopardizing their training scores. The boy introduces himself as Lee Seonghwa, leader of the first aid class. The bank's connection to the school becomes apparent, yet three guards treat them like children on a field trip. Seon introduces herself as the section leader of the second year 10th platoon, 3rd squad. She requests Yonghua's assistance in dividing the class into temporary squads to impress the bank. Amid the relaxed atmosphere and snacking, Jinsun's mind races with worries of potential mishaps. Xionghua approaches, asking if Jinsun was with Seon earlier. Jinsun's thoughts wander, considering whether to inform the squad or section leader. Ultimately, he decides against it. Xionghua invites Jinsun for a drink from the vending machine, sparking hesitation. Is this a trap? CH 14. Nonetheless, Jinsun accepts. Xionghua praises Jinsun's carefree nature and hints at his hidden prowess. Jinsun confirms it's his motto. Xionghua inquires about Jinsung's combat ability and rank, to which Jinsung proudly responds, he's a double F rank champion. Intrigued by Jinsung's nonchalant demeanor, Xionghua watches in awe as Jinsung casually tosses a can into the bin, sealing the moment with an impressive display of precision. Jinsung was a skilled combatant, while Xionghua had chosen to specialize in first aid due to his not so quick reflexes. One sunny day, Jinsung curiously inquired about Xionghua's idea. With a confident smile, Xionghua summoned his idea, revealing a unique power, the ability to transform his hand into a sharp blade. Impressed, Jinsun praised Xionghua's skill and foresaw great potential in his ability. However, as they chatted, Xionghua shared his secret longing to switch to combat, though he thought his dream might never come true. Encouragingly, Jinsun reminded him that first aid was just as crucial as combat, allowing him to save lives in a different way. Xionghua felt uplifted by Jinsun's words, realizing the significance of his role. As they strolled back, Xionghua couldn't help but wish he could use his idea to save lives beyond the academy's walls. Little did they know that a dramatic turn of events was about to unfold. Their day took an unexpected twist when the infamous teacher arrived late, as usual. The teachers assigned grades based on student performance, and Jin Sun, unfortunately, received an F rank. This didn't bother him much, as he knew it was just part of the training process. When the teachers left to get coffee, they inadvertently left the front door unguarded, assuming nothing would happen. Inside, students seemed carefree, not suspecting any trouble. However, their peace was shattered when a group of menacing individuals dressed in black combat suits stormed the bank. Chaos ensued as the intruders attacked the guards. One guard met a tragic fate at the hands of a man wielding a massive sword. The intruders claimed to be South Korean comrades, but suspicions arose that they might be North Korean spies due to their combat attire. CH 15 A leader among the intruders stood out with a scarred face and red glowing eyes, displaying formidable power. He challenged the remaining guards to face him, showcasing his prowess with a deadly sword. The situation was dire, and panic spread among the students. Sensing the danger, Seon assessed the energy levels of the intruders, and realised they were far stronger than anyone anticipated. Seon took charge, urging everyone to take cover and manifest their ideas. Squad leaders were tasked with organising their teams. Amidst the chaos, the intruders demanded money and revealed themselves as the Great Pestilence Syndicate, a ruthless terrorist group known for their cruelty and global havoc. Seon boldly confronted the leader, refusing to back down. A tense standoff ensued as Seon prepared for a one-on-one -on -one battle. CH 16 Seon's determination inspired some students to cheer her on, but Jinsen understood the gravity of the situation. He whispered to Xionghua that they needed to escape, delaying the terrorists' pursuit. Meanwhile, Seon valiantly faced off against the leader, using her wits and agility to fend off his attacks. However, even her skill couldn't protect her forever. Seon was eventually struck, wounded and bleeding on the ground. 
Seeing her courage, Jinsen shouted for everyone to follow him in a hasty retreat. The leader admired their quick decision-making and ordered his comrades to capture them all. As the intruders closed in, Seon rose once more, her spirit unbroken. Impressed by her resilience, the leader offered her a chance to join them. The students' fate hung in the balance as they weighed their options in this high-stakes confrontation. But she refuses, saying she cannot trust him. He introduces himself as Kim Il-jung, the greatest military commander and politician, the son of North Korea. Seon starts to back off, thinking there must be a bounty on his head, as he's the greatest criminal. She says she can buy him spicy rice cakes with all the reward, leaving Kim to laugh hysterically. He got an order to rob a bank with students inside and pull out roots with these students. He thinks it's worth coming here. Finally, Seon gets her blade back by flying it to her. She says she still needs to learn much, but needs her blade for her idea to work. CH 17. On the other side, the robbers find everyone except Jin Sun and Xiong Hua, who are hiding in the bathroom. Jin Sun tells Xiong Hua to rest, but worries they might get caught if they don't go further up and end up like the guards. Jin Sun knows Seon can fight for a while, but not until the end. He tells Xiong Hua they have to fight. Xiong Hua wonders what a C and F rank can do, but Jensen tells him that souls don't have ranks. He tells about Seon's rise from a D rank to an A rank, so Xiong Hua shouldn't be sad about his rank. A guard comes towards the bathroom, and Jin Sun calms everyone down, telling them to focus and do what he says. The terrorist hears them and tells them to come out. Jin Sun comes out and jokes, asking the intruder to teach him his dialect. He threatens that the leader won't mind if a student loses an arm or leg while being captured. Jin Sun gets his dagger out, and the terrorist brings out his Edea, a B-rank weapon that can take his legs from zero to one hundred in a second. Jin Sun tells Xiong Hua to run and activates his S-rank skill, absolute murder, boosting his abilities threefold. He dodges the terrorist's attack effortlessly and strikes him with his dagger, aiming for his abdomen. Jin Sun taunts the terrorist about going from zero to one hundred in a second. The terrorist is stunned that Jin Sun can see his soul name. Jin Sun destroys the terrorist's heel, needed for his skill. While Jin Sun contemplates how to kill the terrorist, Xiong Hua urges him to run. Jin Sun responds by asking who needs to run, as his skill turns off when the opponent's Edea is destroyed or their life is taken. Jin Sun's eyes glow red, his Edea emanating power. Xiong Hua sees his reflection in his eyes. CH 18. Jin Sun snaps out and notices the robber trying to escape. He tightens his grip and tells Xiong Hua to run. Jin Sun observes the Xiong Hua's hands acting as blades and his seemingly indestructible body, contemplating whether it's possible for him to not take damage. Xiong Hua runs away, listening to him. Jin Sun decides to take Route 13 after the robber says he's no fun to fight with. The terrorist contemplates how he hid his power and realises he needs to tell the leader. On the other side, now that Seon has her blade, their fight resumes. She skillfully blocks Il Jung's sword attack with her blade. Il Jung comments her sword must have divine power to weaken his soul name. Her sword is called the Four Tigers Evil Slayer, with a blade said to contain the spirit of the stars. Depending on the wielder's ability, it can slice an Edea above A rank. Seon uses goblin swordsmanship, creating a phantom copy to attack Il Jung. He tries to persuade her to join his side, but she firmly refuses, stating she won't join forces with bastards like him. He aggressively attacks her with his blade, lamenting he won't have the pleasure of playing properly before killing her. Despite his attacks, Seon remains unafraid and blocks each one. The leader of the terrorists, known for his immense strength as a brute force Edia, launched an attack using goblin swordsmanship against the defender. Her phantom copies tried to block the heavy blows, but it was tough going. Even her best defence wasn't enough to hold up against his powerful strikes. She had to figure out a way to buy time and keep the fight going. Out of nowhere, the leader's comrades entered the scene after apprehending some of their own who had tried to escape. They explained that they were split into two groups one tasked with capturing those who had fled outside, and the other dealing with those still on the upper floors. This made Seon realise that even though the situation was chaotic, the military had yet to intervene. It was like they were isolated from the outside world. One of her comrades, Il Jung, noticed her concern, and revealed that their hideout was designed to appear like an ordinary bank to outsiders, using a special disguise to maintain secrecy. Seon grasped the urgency of the situation, she knew she had to leave and seek help, but time was against her. If she left, her comrades might not survive by the time she returned. CH 19 Seon found herself in a dilemma. The leader demanded to know where her earlier energy had disappeared to, while one of the captured individuals attempted to call for help using an emergency button, only to find that there was no signal. 
Il Jung explained that their hiding specialist made sure phones and call buttons wouldn't work, fearing that the troops might track them down. In a tense moment, Seyon intervened as Il Jung threatened a captured employee. She redirected his attention toward her by taunting him as a North monster. This drew his focus away from the employee. Things escalated, and Seyon realised that protecting everyone was a difficult task due to the vast difference in strength. She could only try to stall and gain more time. As the situation intensified, the leader's threats grew more severe. He even suggested severing Seyon's limbs and carrying her around in a bag as an honourable offer. Just then, Xiong Hua entered the room, following Jin Sung's instructions to assess the chaos on the first floor. Xiong Hua introduced himself to Il Jung and shared information about the location of a safe with money on the fifth floor. The leader noticed that some of his comrades hadn't returned from the upper floors. He ordered the remaining members to find a boy while announcing a twisted game. He offered to spare the life of any comrade who brought him Seon's arm or leg. Chaos ensued, and students began questioning their chances of survival, considering how Seon had been protecting them all along. CH 20 Amidst the turmoil, Xiong Hua approached Seon with a message of hope. He urged her to hold on a little longer and explained his decision to join her side against the terrorists. The leader questioned Xiong Hua's loyalty, but Xiong Hua remained steadfast beside Seon. The leader proposed a challenge for survival. If ten of them managed to capture Seon's limb, they would be spared. Seon suggested a different option where both she and Xiong Hua could escape alive, perhaps by eliminating everyone. The leader responded with maniacal laughter and accepted her proposition, but only if she managed to kill everyone herself. As the situation escalated, a girl stood up, arguing that the majority should survive. Seon clashed with her using her goblin swordsmanship, instructing the girl to fight however she could. Despite her skills, the girl eventually fell to Seon's attack and collapsed. In the midst of the chaos, Seon whispered something to the fallen girl, prompting a boy to comment on Seon's vanishing phantom copy, hinting at her growing fatigue. As the two girls continued to fight, Il Jung's excitement grew, fuelled by the hope that they would eliminate each other. Suddenly a can rolls into the room, catching his attention. Then we see Jin Sung standing on the stairs in front of the room, with his death stare that sends shivers down their spines. CH 21. In the darkness, Il Jung's eyes catch sight of a shadowy figure, and a surge of excitement courses through him. However, his excitement quickly turns to anger, as Jin Sun hurls something at him without any explanation, using his soul name. This disrespectful act triggers a wave of irritation within him. As the object reaches him, he realises it's the severed limbs of his comrades. He becomes convinced that he is being underestimated, fueling his determination. Swinging his sword toward the ceiling, it crashes down. Seon reacts swiftly, summoning her phantom copy to shield the students from harm and support the collapsing ceiling. Threatening her, Il Jung warns that escaping means death for everyone, revealing comrades stationed outside. Heading to these comrades, he coldly instructs her to stay put. Despite not wanting to bear the burden, she understands she wouldn't have supported the ceiling if she really wanted revenge. After Il Jung departs, Seon orders the students to move away to survive. Some think of freeing Seon by moving, but facing her or Il Jung seems inevitable. A bold plan to break through the ceiling together is suggested, but halted by hesitation from the second squad leader. The first squad leader who fought Seon earlier calls out to her. Meanwhile, Jin Sun greets Il Jun amidst his fallen comrades, expressing delight at the entertainment from their arrivals. Surprised and impressed by Jin Sun, he offers him a prestigious position in the Great Pestilence Syndicate. After pondering, Jin Sung mumbles his decision and launches an attack against Il Jung. Il Jung counters, showcasing his strength, but Jin Sun evades skillfully. Il Jung realises Jin Sun's ability to perceive soul names and discerns his strengths. The fight continues fiercely, with Jin Sun's eyes glowing red. What will happen next? Find out next time by staying tuned for our future recaps. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great recaps. Last time, our MC's class was under attack by the North Korean's Gi Yung on another floor, believes the chaos caused by Jin Sun will delay the situation, hoping for military intervention due to their central location. The battle rages on, with Jin Sun narrowly evading Il Yung's attacks. This infuriates Il Yung, who calls him a mere squirrel. Jin Sun counters, landing his own attack. Realizing Jin Sun's strategy, Il Yung uses his shadow left hand to strike. Jin Sung's heightened senses let him dodge with skill, showing how good he is in dangerous situations. Il Jung has two ideas, and this one is called the left hand of the first beast, not having any rank or fight skills. Jin Sung is curious, looking at Il Jung's special hand, 
saying he might run away. Ilyung gets angry, saying he hasn't heard such things in a while. Suddenly, the ceiling glows purple, and a huge swirling hole appears. Ilyung moves his hand, making shadows dance on the floors above. Giyung is confused, wondering who made this chaos. The ceiling starts to fall, but Ilyung tries to run away. Jin Sung quickly gets close, stopping him. Ilyung sees Giyung on the top floor, using the chance to escape, while Giyung is confused. Jin Sung wants to attack Giyung, but Giyung moves fast, Dodging, Giyong stands up, looking dark and scary. Iljung thanks Young, not knowing what's going on, and tells Giyong to go to the first floor for safety. He remembers how he decided to come here with the girl and Lee Boomer, not expecting to find someone as dangerous as Jin Sung. Jin Sung's glowing with a scary red light, showing he wants to hurt anyone <laughs> in his way. Giyong doesn't believe Il Young ran because of Jin Sung, but Jin Sung comes close with his red eyes and a scary feeling around him. <laughs> He wants to play with the leader, saying Il Jung left because of him. Giyong takes a metal piece from the ceiling and jumps down to get away. He moves quickly, dodging Jin Sung, who's following him like they're playing tag again. Jin Sung has a red trail behind him as he jumps, but Giyong is too fast, dodging him easily. In the midst of a tense standoff, things were getting even more intense. Jin Sun had Giyong by the neck, and he was teasing him about playing a super scary game involving dismemberment. Ji Young wasn't scared. He was defiant. He told Jin Sun to go play by himself and wasn't phased at all. Jin Sun's grip got even tighter, and they were both hanging upside down in the air, supported by a metal pipe. Jian held onto it really tight so he wouldn't fall to his doom. He was determined not to be done in by someone he thought was just F rank garbage like Jin Sun. Ji Young was a fighter, and he tried to swing and escape from Jin Sun's grasp. And just when things were getting really intense, a sword came flying in. But Jin Sun was like a ninja, effortlessly deflecting it away. This gave Jian a chance to roll with the metal piece still attached to the ceiling, and he went flying down to the first floor. Jin Sun was all excited about playing with his favorite person. Meanwhile, on the other side of the first floor, there was another commotion. A girl named Seyun seemed really tired, and the leader of the first squad, Haeon, looked like she was about to attack. But wait, Sung Hwa stepped in. He said they needed to protect the students, and asked how Haeon could attack someone who had fought for them. Hyun was ready to fight though. She had this cool thing called an Idea striking glove, and Sungwa had his own special power, an Idea, to hold her back. But guess what? Instead of attacking, Hyun told her squad to help the students who were stuck under the falling ceiling, and she went to save another squad member, Kin Seon. Everyone was pretty shocked by this turn of events. And then, a woman stepped forward with a not so great idea. She thought they should sacrifice Sane and the boy student to save themselves. But Hyun, another strong girl, wasn't having it. She warned them not to take a step closer or she'd get tough. She explained that they had figured out who was causing all the trouble with the third squad leader. Heian had some inside info. After making sure the other students were safe, they cleared away the debris around Kin Seyun. Sunwa, one of the girls, asked what had happened. Seyun explained that she had trusted her squad member, Heian, to help out. They even had a secret plan from earlier, when they fought. Heian pretended to be scared, just like they learned in school. Why? Well, they had seen a newspaper article that said the bad guys never leave any witnesses behind. Even if they killed Kin Seyun, they wouldn't be safe from the bad guys. So, Heian told her squad to act like they were following the bad guy's lead. Seyun teased Heian, saying she acted really cool instead of being scared. Heian joked back, Does it really matter when you're trying to convince a crowd? They were having a fun moment, but then there was a loud rumbling sound. The ceiling started to open up, and they thought it might be Il Jung, the troublemaker. But someone told Seyun that Jin Sun had tricked Il Jung into going upstairs. Seyun found it hard to believe. She didn't think Jin Sun, who was just a trainee with good stamina, could pull that off. In the dimly lit hallway, Xionghua's heart raced as he stood next to Seyun. They anxiously waited, their ears still echoing with the strange sound that had just reverberated through the air. Frightened by the unknown, Xionghua remembered the sound and glanced at the staircase. Without hesitation, he bolted upstairs, driven by urgency and concern for their friends, Gi Yung and Jin Sung. Seyun's mind buzzed with thoughts, pondering what might unfold if Il Jung and Jin Sung crossed paths in a fierce battle. Despite her own vulnerability, she decided to follow Xionghua closely, determined to support their friends. On the higher floor, their footsteps echoed with apprehension as they approached the battlefield. The clash between Jin Sung and Il Jung had left the room in disarray. As Seyun cautiously opened the door, a grim scene greeted them. Lifeless bodies sprawled across the floor, bearing the indelible marks of a great sword's onslaught. Over 30 strikes had occurred, a testament to the prolonged combat Jin Sung had endured. Among the wreckage, a large hole captured Seyun's attention, 
Stretching upward beyond the one on the lower floor, her focus shifted as Giyoung and Jinsung tumbled through the opening, their arrival followed by a frantic blade throw from Sanwa. The urgency to protect Jinsung fueled their actions as they swiftly retreated, holding on to each other's hands. Confusion hung in the air as Seyun questioned why Jinsung was attacking them. Jinsung, his eyes glinting with malice, offered a sinister reply. It was time for them all to play. Before we continue, take a moment to answer the question of the day. Magic or martial arts? Comment down below for a chance to be shouted out. Now, back to the recap. With a sinister grin and a dark aura, Jin Sung's intentions turned ominous. Seyun's expression flickered with a mix of fear and disbelief. Struggling to comprehend the transformation, Giyoung's voice broke through, reassuring Seyun that this was not the same Jin Sung they once knew. He had chased away the vestiges of Il Jung's influence, urging them to escape. As Seyun and the group fled, Jin Sung's voice echoed hauntingly. He taunted them, declaring that they were playing a deadly game. His words stung, and Seyun couldn't help but notice the beauty of his Edea amidst the darkness. Yet, his potential was now twisted, a fact she found difficult to accept. With Jin Sung's onslaught approaching, Seyun faced an impossible choice. Swordless and drained of energy, she could only stall for time. As Jin Sung lunged, she skillfully evaded his attacks, each move calculated to maximize her limited defense. Observing Jin Sung's struggle to control his Adea, Seyun empathized with his plight, his hardships mirroring her own. A flicker of emotion crossed Jin Sung's face, but it quickly hardened. He coldly bid Seyun farewell and unleashed a swift, deadly attack. His dagger slashed across her throat, sending her collapsing to the ground, the world fading to black. Amidst the darkness, the story rewound to Jin Sung's past. Elementary school marked the beginning, a time overshadowed by his parents' tragic demise at the hands of a robber. Alone and orphaned, he found solace with his socially awkward uncle and aunt. Both possessed f rank Edea, symbolic of their own struggles. His aunt's Edea, a decaying rope, represented his fragile connections while his uncle's rotting wooden bat embodied his harsh reality. Neglected and isolated, Jin Sung faced relentless torment, both in school and beyond. A beacon of hope appeared when he encountered a puppy at a playground. The bond between them grew strong, providing Jin Sung with a fleeting taste of companionship and happiness. Despite the hardships, the puppy became a source of light, a true friend who followed him with unwavering devotion. As the days passed, Jin Sung's connection with the puppy deepened. He lost track of time, losing himself in the joy of friendship. Returning home late was a trade-off to escape the harsh beatings. Yet, even his uncle noticed the puppy, prompting Jin Sung to take it home to avoid suspicion. One evening, as the sun set and dinner time approached, things took a turn for the worse. Puppy's barking got on the nerves of Jin Sung's uncle, making him really upset. Even though Jin Sung apologized, his uncle's anger flared up, and he pushed Jin Sung to the ground, scolding him for being careless. Poppy's barking continued, and it seemed like the whole situation was getting out of control. In a burst of anger, Jin Sung's uncle kicked Poppy hard, sending the poor dog crashing into the wall. The chaos didn't stop there. Jin Sung's uncle and some others tied him down and started to hurt him. It was a terrible beating, and all the while his uncle blamed Jin Sung's parents for raising him to be weak and proud. In the midst of the brutal attack, Jin Sung's uncle shockingly revealed that he was the one who had done something terrible. He confessed to murdering Jin Sung's parents, blaming it on their supposed weak genetics. This shocking revelation left Jin Sung speechless and utterly stunned. But the nightmare didn't end there. The anger inside Jin Sung's uncle erupted even more as Poppy, in a last act of loyalty, tried to protect Jin Sung. The result was tragic. His uncle ended Poppy's life. Jin Sung felt a weight of guilt and sadness realizing that Poppy had only wanted to be his friend. The string of heart-wrenching events made Jin Sung question why his family was targeted in such a horrible way. A surge of anger and a strange feeling of wanting to hurt others started to well up within him. In a twist of fate, he grabbed a dagger and attacked his uncle, ending his cruel reign. But Jin Sung's fury didn't stop there. He turned the dagger towards his aunt and took her life as well. A twisted smile appeared on his face as he declared that killing them had been harder than not giving in to his murderous desires. The aftermath was chilling. Jin Sung found himself waking up in a hospital bed, his mind foggy with memories of the dreadful incident. A nurse comforted him, urging him to rest and recover from the splitting headache he was feeling. His thoughts drifted to the people he cared about, his classmates Sung Wah and Lee Sion. His concern for them was overwhelming. With anticipation, he awaited the arrival of Seyun, eager to see her alive and safe. But a haunting thought crossed his mind. How could he have caused so much trouble yet still function like before? He felt frustrated by his lack of control, but as he spotted Seyun approaching, a wave of relief washed over him. Seeing her unharmed filled him with gratitude, and he begged for forgiveness for his actions. The incident had closed both high schools for a week, causing shock and sadness throughout the town. 
police were informed, and the consequences were dire, resulting in the tragic loss of lives. Through all the darkness and turmoil, Seyun emerged as a hero for standing up to Kim Il-jung. In the aftermath of the intense battles and challenges, things took an unexpected turn. Even as she endured countless interviews with reporters, Jin Sung remained in a deep coma for three whole days. During this time, the young girl showed remarkable strength by refraining from discussing Jin Sung's condition with anyone. She was a rock, pillar of strength, assuring Jin Sung that everything would be all right. She urged him to stop his tears, reminding him that Jin Sung meant no harm to her. She emphasized that there was no issue with his unique ability to bring his ideas to life, to manifest them. Once classes resumed, a palpable shift in the atmosphere was felt throughout the school. The students had fought valiantly against the menacing pest, and now they were perceived differently. Jin Sung, ever observant, overheard hushed conversations among his fellow students. Some wished to confront the criminals responsible for the chaos, to take them down just like the legendary Class 10 had done. As Jin Sung contemplated their words, a heavy realization dawned on him. His own idea had inadvertently caused immense suffering and even death, despite those affected being criminals. It was a solemn truth. No one deserved to die in such a brutal way. The weight of his power's consequences weighed heavily on Jin Sung's young shoulders. He knew he had to learn how to control his idea's power, to not be swayed by its influence. He sought guidance, a mentor who could help him master his abilities. And so he ventured to find Sung Ho, hoping that the experienced figure could offer the wisdom he desperately needed. In their conversation, Jin Sung posed a curious question to Sung Ho. Did the rank of one's idea affect the distance between their souls? Deep down, Jin Sung already suspected the answer, and Sung Ho confirmed his suspicions. Manifestations could indeed differ based on rank, but the soul itself remained untarnished by such distinctions. It was a lesson in the profound nature of one's essence. As their discussion continued, Jin Sung attempted to explain his perspective. He pointed out how performance varied based on the rank of an idea, which Sung Ho acknowledged. However, Sung Ho stressed that these differences didn't create rigid boundaries between souls. He questioned Jin Sung's motives, wondering if he was searching for confirmation in their conversation. This interruption led Jin Sung to contemplate even deeper truths, the very existence of leagues between souls. Jin Sung had always believed that his own twisted soul couldn't possibly belong to a higher league. After all, it harbored a desire to kill without discrimination. Admitting the existence of leagues would imply that his soul's purpose was rooted in murder, a chilling realization. Sung Ho reminded Jin Sung of his initial advice, encouraging him to work hard and put in the effort. Despite Jin Sung's doubts, he had continued to come to the school, showing determination. Sung Ho shed light on the world's intricate mechanics. In this realm, a Higher-ranked idea correlated with greater combat ability. Jin Sung posed a thought-provoking scenario. What if someone with a lower-ranked idea exhibited exceptional combat skills? The answer was clear. The soul and the idea's rank became inconsequential in the face of true prowess. Sung Ho revealed a powerful truth about Jin Sung's presence at the school. He hadn't joined out of coercion. He had entered a realm where predefined leagues held no sway. His higher combat ability with a lower-ranked idea was a testament to this reality. In a moment of self-reflection, Jin Sung realized that he had been denying his own idea's potential. He had believed that his high-ranked yet corrupted idea couldn't be accepted. The question arose, had he become the answer he sought? Had he achieved a high combat ability with his B-ranked idea, embodying the very solution he had been searching for? Jin Sung shared a secret with Sung Ho, revealing his true idea, the one he had used in the squad battle. He unveiled that his F-rank was, in fact, an impressive S-rank. Sung Ho believed him, recognizing the sincerity in Jin Sung's words. There was no reason for him to lie, especially after he had played a pivotal role in defeating the pest. With honesty and vulnerability, Jin Sung confessed his fear of being controlled by his idea. He recounted the traumatic experience of losing his sanity in the bank, a moment when he had succumbed to his darker impulses. Sung Ho offered a solution to build a strong foundation of mind and body. He emphasized that self-love was crucial, as those who couldn't love themselves denied the effort they had invested. As Jin Sung pondered these words, a profound realization emerged. Loving oneself meant accepting all aspects, even the ones that brought pleasure from darker desires like killing. It was a journey of self-discovery, of finding balance and control over his own power. Sung Ho questions if he has put effort into becoming a murderer, urging him to love the side of himself that worked hard to overcome the murderous intent. He shares his own experience of three years in middle school, where he continuously lost and despised his weakness. Only by analyzing his idea and understanding his limits did he surpass them. He removes his shirt to reveal his ongoing dedication to becoming his best self. Inspired by some of those words, Ginson resolves to surpass himself and embrace his true potential. The teacher addresses a group of students and informs them that firearms are ineffective against Idea manifestations. 
but chemical attacks pose a different threat. They are explained that once a person reverts to their normal human state, they will be killed. The 10th platoon is engaged in training exercises involving thick gas. Yi Yung questions the purpose of practicing resistance and even attempts to escape during the training session. The training takes place during their chemistry class, and as a motivational measure, the students are instructed to recite the national anthem while surrounded by dense gas. However, when the training concludes, only Jin Sung reports as the representative of his class since all ten of his classmates have passed out. He consistently ranks first in a range of training exercises, including basic training, crawl training, and individual battle training. His unwavering determination to surpass himself drives him forward. During stealth training, he exhibits remarkable skills, eluding detection until the platoon leader declares the session over. All of Jin Sang's accomplishments are meticulously documented in the report of the 10th platoon, handed over by his homeroom teacher to the principal. However, the principal deems the report insufficient, as the 998 infiltration training brigade is closing in. They are displeased with the high school receiving government support. The principal proposes short-term combat training for the second-year students, as the third-year students are already performing well. The next day during training, the students are carrying boxes. Jin Sung, seeking to further develop his muscles, decides to carry two, earning him the nickname Mr. Excessive from Seon. The way everyone around him interacts with him undergoes a noticeable change due to his attitude toward everything. He asks Seyun if she wants to know more about his idea. She nonchalantly responds that other girls might have swooned, but she held back. Jinsen reveals that he already disclosed the information to Sung Ho. Seyun, determined to find out, grabs him by the collar and insists he tells her everything. He promises to share the details when they have some privacy. Meanwhile, Giyoung reflects on the intense and murderous aura he sensed emanating from Jin Sung on the day of the incident. Reluctant to accept the truth until it is confirmed, he wonders how it is possible that Il Yung ran away in fear of Jin Sung. When Jin Soon inquires about the purpose behind moving the boxes, Seyun informs him that it is part of guerrilla training also referred to as Ranger Training. The second-year students are clad in black uniforms and carry large bags reminiscent of those used in the army as they embark on their training journey. Seyun and Jin Sung, as always, stick together. She questions why Jin Sung, who used to detest HTE and was dragged into it by Sung Ho, is now engaging in it so excessively. Jin Sun responds by saying that Sun Bei would have carried dumbbells in each hand as well. As they near the narrow bank, the site of the past incident, they are granted a break. During the break, some individuals approach Seyun and praise her, requesting her autograph. She realizes that this is the principal's tactic to advertise the school. The students become topics of conversation in the media, and even store owners have been approached by teachers beforehand as a means of promoting the school. However, this approach seems inhumane for the victims of the incident. Jin Sung also feels the same way, but he has made a decision that he is above his soul, believing that there are no walls within it and that he can change. As they continue their march, the principal discusses Seiyun over the phone, mentioning that the route through the incident area is working out. He expresses his intention to encourage the students who were exhausted from the training as he sits in his car, stating that it is his role as the battalion commander. The march continues, and their next trail proves to be steep, prompting the teacher to instruct them to take a longer break. Seon playfully teases Jin Sung with his nickname, Mr. Excessive, and offers him chocolate. Suddenly, a car stops in front of them, revealing the principal's presence. He asks Seon if the march is manageable and treats Jin Sung differently, instructing him to address him as the battalion commander. The principal asks him to open his bag, seemingly looking for a mistake he made in following the packing list. Finding nothing, he points to something at the bottom of his bag and discovers sandbags he has for training. During the break, Seon grows angry at the principal's attempt to smoke Jin Sung for something, but the teacher intervenes. Meanwhile, Sung Ho and Jui stand on top of the structure, with Sung Ho advising Jui to focus solely on Jin Soon, despite her pointing out that Jin Sung's rank is not worth much. Sung Ho reveals that Jin Soon ranks higher than the entire first squad, leaving her surprised and questioning who is higher than whom. Songo explains to Ju Ye that her evaluation of Jin Sung is based solely on a fight that occurred this semester, neglecting to consider the efforts he has put in during the past two months since joining HT. He urges her to see for herself and declares that this guerrilla training will be his solo stage. The building they enter is new and designed in a military style. Jin Sung is assigned the last number, 300, causing him to wonder if he is still at the bottom. All the students are instructed to quickly report to the PT center, and the voice on the speaker turns out to be Sung Ho. He introduces himself as the instructor for guerrilla training and announces that the students with the first numbers will be in room one, 
while those with the last numbers will be in room 10, with the rest of the numbers filling the rooms in between. These numbers represent the rank evaluated by the school, but Sungo emphasizes that during this training, the score will be independent of their numbers. He reveals that guerrilla training will make up a significant percentage of their final grade, and explains that their combat rank may change dramatically after the announcement. The students are given a lunch break, but those with the ending numbers are left with almost nothing to eat. Jin Sung asks for food from Sung Ho and shares it with everyone. Grateful for his gesture, they express their gratitude and promise to repay him. Jin Sung asks them to make a different promise instead, not to give up on the training. Though initially discouraged by being the weakest 15 males in the school, they find inspiration in Jin Sung's determination, despite his rank and aspire to be like him. They appoint him as the room leader, and all agree not to give up. The guerrilla PT training is scheduled for 3 p.m. During the training, the students appear exhausted, but those in room 10 show remarkable passion and give their best. Ju is surprised by their dedication. When the training ends, they are advised to check the fire watch schedule posted on the pin board. The trainer calls out trainee 300 and awards all numbers of room 10 extra points, which fills them with joy. At night, Jin Sung anxiously waited for Seun, glancing at his watch. Seun approached Jin Soon, and she asked if he had been waiting long. Jin Sun reassured her that it's fine. She questioned their being together due to their ranking of 1 and 300, and inquired when he plans to escape the last place. He confidently told her that he will acquire a badge of rank, as he was the only trainee in his class. They cheerfully discussed the possibilities of him becoming a private, a corporate worker, or even a surgeon, always dreaming big. Seyun mumbled that it might be a good idea. The next day, early morning training began, and everyone looked like zombies except for Jin Sun, who was two laps ahead of them. The instructor watched him with pride, while the nurse, who was also present, revealed to Jui that none of the Room 10 guys received any medical treatment or time for recovery after yesterday's PT training. She was surprised and referred to them as a horde of zombies. Sung Ha found the name cool, and the extra points for the morning double time were mostly awarded to the boys from Room 10, with Seyun coming in second and Jin Sung consistently at the top. Another assistant instructor witnessed their training and couldn't believe that these were the weakest second-year students. He became scared when Jin Sung called out to him from behind, curious about something. Still, he thought that he seemed normal and decided to refresh himself by talking to him. Jin Sun asked to clear the obstacle course quickly, but if he survives against it, Sung Ho will call those who finish all the training stations to the PT training until everyone completes the obstacle course. Jin Sun and the other boys got excited upon hearing that the faster they clear the course, the more points they earn and the longer the PT session will be. The assistant was shocked to realize that Jin Sun was the boss of the psychopaths. The instructor from earlier and others observing the scene asked how these boys managed to arrive so quickly and whether they weren't instructed properly. The assistant explained that when 300 tells them to jump, all 14 of them jump. When he tells them to cross, they all cross. And when he tells them to climb, they all climb. They exchanged glances, realizing that Jin's son was the one running away from the fight during the squad battles. They couldn't help but be surprised by the change in his behavior as he now encouraged everyone. After successfully clearing the obstacle course, they were ready to head to the PT room. The assistant instructor slapped his head and asked if he could switch out on day three. Sung Ho announced that they would be doing training in the Idea training area due to the extreme heat. The purpose of this training was to ensure that trainees could continue combat using their Idea even when their stamina was at its limit. Unlike how they previously used their Idea in a normal state, the training aimed to bring out their hidden Idea power in an exhausted state, allowing trainees with strong willpower to contemplate how to use their Idea effectively. He added that this training focused on Idea power usage, specifically on breaking boulders. Each trainee could choose to break one, and they would switch if they could no longer manifest their Idea. He explained that some of them might feel disadvantaged, but he confidently stated that his Idea was a personal combat one. He demonstrated it on a boulder and effortlessly broke it. Jin Sung noticed that Sung Ho's strength, fueled by the sun's energy, had grown stronger. He realized he could now handle a considerable amount of weight when he was throwing objects. After he successfully broke the boulder, he turned to the trainees and encouraged them to do the same. Sayun, the first to step up, confidently demonstrated her goblin swordsmanship. With a single swing, she effortlessly sliced the boulder into pieces, impressing everyone. Jui acknowledged, though, that Sung Ho's innate talent was on a completely different level. Next up was gi -yung, who attempted to break the boulder using a rotten tree, but failed miserably. Sung Ho, always supportive, 
reassured him that his effort would still be considered when they were graded. Finally, it was the turn of the trainee from room 300. The other students discussed how he was the leader of the ten trainees in the room. Jin Soon concentrated, manifesting his idea and initially summoning a dagger. However, something changed, and his aura began to shift. Giyoung and Seiyun grew wary as they witnessed this transformation. Undeterred by the unsettling aura, Jin San shattered the boulder into tiny, almost invisible pieces with remarkable ease. He struggled to regain control over his emotions and the murderous aura he had unintentionally unleashed. Sung Ho advised him to seek help if needed. Jin Sung didn't want to rely on others every time to control his abilities. He expressed his gratitude to Sung Ho for her assistance and explained that he had utilized his idea, partial murder with only a fraction of its power, earning him a ranking of A. He revealed that he had unleashed only his right hand, emphasizing that controlling more parts became increasingly challenging, dependent on his mental state. Proud of his achievement, Jin Sung shared the news with Seon, and his teammates joyfully lifted him in celebration. Later that night, Jin Sung knocked on the nurse's door, concerned about the trainees in Room 10, who hadn't fully recovered their stamina. However, his homeroom teacher intercepted him, warning that coming here without permission could lead to punishment. The teacher displayed an unusual level of anxiety, seemingly concerned about other teachers discovering Jin Sung's presence. As they conversed outside the nurse's room, the door suddenly opened, revealing the teachers in a meeting. One of them mockingly referred to Jin Sung as the double F rank of Helen High, and questioned his reason for being there, insinuating he might be complaining about the training's intensity. The teacher then brought Jin Sung inside, where the rest of the teachers were discussing what to eat and playfully teasing Sung Ho. Though conflicted by their casual attitude, Jin Sung responded politely, stating that the training had been beneficial. His homeroom teacher, eager to see him leave, wondered if he'd come to complain. Jin Sung explained his purpose was to discuss stamina recovery for the Room 10 trainees. Before we continue, let's take a moment to shout out at Detective Iran 2076 who commented, I like this story so much thank you for introducing me to this. You really deserve more subscribers. You dropped this on our trash skills to SSS video. Thanks for commenting. The teacher checked the rankings and was astonished to find Jin Sung in the top spot. He questioned whether Jin Sung had paid off Sung Ho or if Sung Ho had shown favoritism due to his HT status. The teachers were surprised to see all the Room 10 trainees ranking so high, speculating about a group bribe or manipulation. Jin Sung defended Sung Ho, asserting that he couldn't be influenced by money or favors. Jin Sung couldn't believe it. The teacher remained skeptical, questioning whether the remarkable performance in idea training was too good to be true. Jin Sung felt a surge of anger within him at the suspicion. How could they doubt him like this? But his homeroom teacher, understanding the gravity of the situation, stepped in. He assured Jin Sung that he would take care of it and offered to escort him back to his dorm. As they walked together, Jin Sung tried to calm himself down. He realized that maintaining a relaxed attitude was crucial in life, especially in such challenging situations. Once in his dorm, Jin Sung felt compelled to inform all the teachers about the incredible feat they were about to achieve. If the entire Room 10 could manage to secure a place within the top 30, it would be nothing short of a miraculous achievement. The teacher responded with a hint of amusement, saying that they would all be promoted to corporal if they succeeded. However, there was a catch. If a single person failed to make it to the top, they would all be demoted. It sounded like a joke but Jin Sung knew the teacher was entirely serious. The teachers couldn't help but engage in friendly banter, proposing bets among themselves. They wagered $20 that at least one person from Room 10 would make it into the top 30, while Jin Sung and his classmates watched with a mix of curiosity and excitement. Just then, the nurse came outside and offered an apology, admitting that she should have attended to him more promptly earlier. Jin Sung, always brimming with confidence, decided to enlist her help in restoring their stamina and winning the bet. The nurse couldn't help but comment on his incredible self-assuredness. Upon his return to the training area, Jin Sung was met with an unexpected sight. His teammates were being bullied and physically beaten by some fellow trainees. The bullies were furious, accusing Jin Sung's group of tampering with the training boulder. They demanded to speak to their boss. Jin Sung hesitated, but realized he needed to take action. He decided to call Sung Ho for help. However, when he saw how the teacher was treating his group, he had second thoughts. The bully caught sight of him hiding and smirked, taunting him. Jin Sung tried to resist, knowing that the nurse would come to their aid eventually. But the situation escalated. The leader of the bullies used his idea to restrain Jin Sung, wrapping his arms and legs around him making it difficult for him to breathe. The bully continued to provoke Jin Sung, claiming there was no dirty trick he could pull at that moment. Jin Sung made a choice. He decided to let the bully have his moment, knowing that the nurse would heal them afterward. His teammates tried to intervene, but their efforts were in vain. The bully taunted Jin Sung, suggesting that he should stay hidden if he was weak, 
One of Jin Sung's teammates revealed that he had witnessed everything when Jin Sung called Sung Ho. Even though Jin Sung had stopped them, they had still fought. This revelation made the bullies think less of their leader, but he remained unfazed. Jin Sung reflected on his teachings. He had always encouraged them never to give up, but if he fought now, they wouldn't get the ranked badge they desired. However, he realized that the badge wasn't what truly mattered to the zombie horde. He felt a sense of shame for momentarily forgetting his own advice. Summoning his Edea, Jin Sung manifested a dagger, but the bully scoffed at it, calling it weak. He challenged Jin Sung, asking what he could do with it. Jin Sung, however, called out to the zombie horde, urging them not to rely solely on Edea. He demonstrated this by using his physical strength to attack the bully, emphasizing that the bully was overly dependent on Edea and lacked physical strength. As Jin Sung's blows landed, the bully eventually passed out, overwhelmed by the physical assault. Jin Sung instructed his teammates to take out the trash, referring to the defeated bully. The next day in the training room, Room 10 once again surpassed the other rooms, proving their strength and unity. The nurse approached Jui and delivered the news. She had managed to barely restore trainee 7, but he suffered from mental shock and couldn't participate in training. Furthermore, the Room 10 trainees who had been beaten up and barely recovered did not receive stamina recovery treatment. Sung Ho, the instructor, took action. He called trainee number 300 and deducted points from him due to the situation, causing him to drop back to rank 300. What will happen next? Find out next time by staying tuned for our future recaps. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great recaps.